Welcome to Stink Permissimity. Well, that's not how you say it. Welcome to Synchronicity. We got a fun episode this day, today, whatever today is. That's the day you're listening to it. We're, I don't have any notes kind of really written down. I just have a lot of stuff that's been on my mind. I feel like I will get more organized in terms of notes and plans for episodes. That's the respectful thing to do for an audience that is so lovely, such as you, yourself. I love you so much. It's I, I should probably put just the slightest bit of effort to collecting the cacophony of sounds and thoughts and images in my mind to, in a structured way. That would might be nice. But alas, this is not that episode. So we're going to be talking about a bunch of different stuff. Uh, kind of makes sense. Let's talk about the main themes that have been coming out uh, for me and for a lot of people who have been getting in touch over the past uh, month, two months. Um, one that I think not everyone is dealing with right now, but is certainly an aspect of kind of realizing what the fuck is actually going on here, which is it's all you. Have you noticed at this point that whenever you find another, another person, maybe an intimate relationship, maybe someone you listen to, maybe even someone you listen to on a podcast, whenever you find a resonant tone or frequency or voice, have you realized that's that's you yet? When the person is saying consistently that it's you, that's authentic. When they say, hey, it's, it's you except for this, except for that person, except for this situation, except for this thing here, uh, that's not you. So you don't have to take responsibility for that. That person, that aspect of reality is just you trying to trick yourself into actually what's going on. It's not, that's not, that's not accurate. It's you can play that game. I believe forever. This also brings into this idea of what is reincarnation? What is karma? What is the transmutation of energy? What is all this stuff? What does it mean for our own individual senses of consciousness? And what does it mean for kind of a broader metaphysical principle? So these are the types of uh, highfalutin questions we're going to try to get to, to answers to those today. So just the guy took a little bit of acid and smoking a little bit of weed trying to get to the meaning of life. No big deal. We're going to do it. It's going to be fun. You're going to have a great time and you're going to love it. Uh, so what do we do when confronted with the reality that we know we are subjectively, subconsciously generating everything we experience out in the world, right? Not just through some person, like, oh, well, yeah, it's all you, man. Like, that's just all you. No, but like, really, it is all you. Like, you actually are doing that. That hits our logical, rational, conscious mind as wrong. And that creates a schism between our subjective, subconscious mind, which is the generator of things. Think of it kind of like a, a safety um, a safety deposit box or a vault where you, whatever you put in there, it's going to keep and accept. And whenever you go to come and take it out, it's going to be there. You could put a big steaming pile of poo in there if you wanted. It's going to stay in there. I don't, I guess poo decomposes or whatever. Just assume it's infinite poo and it's going to stay in there forever because it's that type of safety deposit. It's a vault. You put it in there and it keeps infinite, whatever it is. So if it's poop, it's going to stay infinitely fresh poop. It's disgusting. I don't know why I'm dwelling on the poop. Anyway, that's one thing. If you keep abundance, riches, love, harmony, peace in there, you, when you go to retrieve it, it will also be there for you. That is our subconscious mind. It just holds and gives, holds and gives. Think of like a birthing process. You, you receive, you receive, and then it's birthed. That's what happens. And it always births what you believe to be true. That's why when we say something um, like, uh, I'm rich, I'm rich. I know so much of the money stuff still pinging people. You know how I know the money stuff is like a big time energy right now? I, and if you fall into this category, it's totally cool. Don't worry about it. It's just we're doing something. We're moving the energy of value and transaction and money around. Uh, people are really like they're 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 buying things. They're trying they're they want to buy stuff and a lot of people look at that it's like it's capitalism out of control man it's out of control these systems they're just we're slaves to buy and yeah sure sir obviously there are people who are using that as a numbing mechanism but there's also a energy movement that's going on kind of like a circulatory system with money with value with resources 
And a lot of people are feeling compelled to spend right now if they have. And a lot of people are preoccupied with getting money to spend. That's okay. It's not a big deal. That's just an energy that we're aware of. That's why if you say, I'm abundant, I'm wealthy, I got so much money, and then you look at your bank account or you think in your head, you go, no, you no, you don't. That doesn't work. You're not actually inducing or suggesting a state to your subconscious or the deepest part of you. You're fighting it. You're saying this is wrong, and that doesn't work. That's trying to use your willpower or effort to generate a feeling or a kind of manifesting idea. It's, it doesn't work. That's why a lot of people, they could listen to me or anyone else talk about this shit for forever, but if they're trying to do it through willpower and effort and lying to themselves, that it will not work. So what you want to do is speak to yourself in appropriate times. This is why the drowsy state akin to sleep is such a popular kind of modality. This is why meditation, I think, is good. I think where some meditation practices fall short is they don't have a directional um, component to them. They're almost too meta. Like focusing on the idea of peace and love for the entire world, that's like scale up to that bad boy. You know what I mean? Don't start. That's like expert. Don't start there. Start with like your own existence because what is out there is ultimately a reflection of what is inside you, right? So start with your own material, your own content, your own movie of your life. Start with that. Start focusing on areas that you feel you would like more peace, harmony, abundance, love. That's it. That's it. That's all you have to do. If you get caught up in narratives of what other people are doing, you need to be prepared to have kind of a certain level of uh, um, uh, balance because it's super easy to get caught off. I say this as someone, my power, as I understand it, is I'm really emotional and I'm also very adept at understanding and processing uh, intellectual and emotional concepts and then communicating them. That's why I have this podcast. That's why a lot of people listen to me. No matter what, <laughs> it's just a skill. My downfall has been at times that I'm incredibly emotional and I don't have a hard time communicating and understanding emotional and intellectual concepts. It's a double-edged sword because I can go wildly in any direction if I allow myself to. So my, I use the, uh, oh, what a perfect segue. I love it when it comes in my head. My main kind of inroad, this is going to sound ridiculous to a lot of people, but for realizing um, how to control my emotions and why that's useful has primarily been through the Miami Dolphins. And let's talk about those Miami Dolphins. You like that hard pivot? It's not. It makes perfect sense. Did anyone see the Raiders game? We'll talk about how imagination stuff came to that. Holy shit, that was insane. Doesn't make sense. Bent reality there. Sorry if I pushed it a little too hard. Um, what the fuck? Let me explain about the emotions and how football and how the Dolphins taught me how to regulate and be aware of and then make conscious kind of scientific wishing or thinking a part of my aspect as opposed to just kind of undisciplined, wow, which is also valid and cool. So when the Dolphins used to lose when I was younger, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, I would be devastated. And of course, this is ridiculous. It's a football team. I don't own. I don't play. I don't have any real other than an emotional connection to this team. I have no reason to be upset. It's insane behavior. Totally aware of that at the time. Nevertheless, I love this team so much. I would get worked up for it usually be like a week until they played again. Then it would be, you know, I, I was like, all right, this is too long. I can't let this be upset about this for this long and read about this team. Slowly but surely whittled, whittled it down to now where if the Dolphins lose, you know, maybe in a critical juncture, I'll be upset for like 20 minutes. But usually it's like right after the game, no matter what happens, no matter how devastating, I'm over it. And I've applied this to trading cryptocurrency, relationships, all aspects of my life. Just be over it. Not in a... You can't force it. If I would have just said to myself at any other point when I was very upset about this thing, I know this is ridiculous. I know it's sports. And I know it's the Dolphins. I know it sounds stupid, but it was helpful for me to learn this about myself. And then I could extrapolate that lesson and apply it to other areas in my life. 
So if I would have said to myself, hey, man, just get over it. Like, it's not a big deal. When I was like really upset, you know, 20 years ago when the Dolphins lost, I'd been like, fuck you, man. You fucking, what do you, how dare you say that to me? So I understand that you you have to actually go through the motions and the process to get to the point where you recognize, hey, this is silly. Hey, yes, I care about this thing. It is something I'm interested in, but can I contextually put it into place where it needs to be so I can do the things I really want to do in life? Because I love watching the Dolphins. I very much enjoy the idea of going to the Super Bowl and bringing all my friends with me. That's going to be a thing that happens. But how much of my life do I want that to be? If I want it to be all of my life, that's fine. I can do that. That's totally allowed. You will naturally find the things you want to do when you pursue the things you want to do. Isn't that interesting how that works? Stop focusing on shit you don't want to do. Stop focusing on what other people are doing to you. The only reason to focus on what other people are doing is they're mirroring <clears throat> some energy in you that you resonate with. So as soon as they've done, as soon as you recognize that, they're off the hook, <clears throat> you're on the hook. And that's cool because now you know how to self-regulate, be aware of your issues, and actually do something to change them. So what is that thing that we do? We speak about it a lot. We call it, I don't like the term manifestation. I don't like the term imaginal acts. It's nothing to do with that. It's really using your subconscious. You can call it God. You can call it the universal creative principle. It is you. Not in an abstract way, not in a uh, intellectual, not in a conceptual way. It is actually you. You will experience it. A lot of the interest and um, kind of awareness being put on psychedelics over the past 20, 30, 40 years is because they really get people in touch with other aspects of their consciousness that they may not have had too much contact with as an adult. When you're a child, it seems you have a little more awareness of this kind of internal world and the connection. You don't know any better. You don't know what the world is. I'm pretty sure my son Eli, four-year-old, thinks cars are the dominant life form. I think he's slowly gaining awareness that that's not true, <laughs> but he loves cars. So my point is, is that we learn these things over time, but once you get this kind of core essential realization that it's all you, you then have the ability to kind of shape and contour your experience, your perception, your observation, and ultimately just like what you go through that you call life here. That's important to remember no matter what's going on. Because if you can remember that when shit is going quote unquote wrong or bad or not good, you then take responsibility for the situation and absolutely can dictate what happens now that again brings up a lot of fear for some people it's like no i'm not in control i can't be in control that that's okay that's a part of you that hasn't fully come to terms with that you know no matter what's happened in your life or anyone else's life it's your and their individual responsibility an individual i've said it before this has to do with you as a person being indivisible from the one, which is all there is. There is one universal human, meta-human. We are all a part of that living out experiences that we desire to live out. Desire is not a bad thing. Wanting things is not a bad thing. Crystallizing your lack of having those things because you feel like you don't have them, I don't want to say it's a bad thing. It's just something that I, it's inelegant. And what I mean by that is if you feel like, I really need, I want that money so bad, I want that person so bad, I need them, I want them, I need them, I want them, you're repelling them because you're not actually creating the situation and experience of having and being in. You are creating a situation of lacking and not being in. That's all. You're solidifying it. But desire, wanting something, being pleasantly amused and curious about something that, wow, I, I think I want that, pursue it. Pursue it and see what happens. That goes for material things. It goes for emotional things. It goes for experiences. I think, I don't think, at a certain point, you will get to the point where, did I say at a certain point you will get to the point? <laughs> nice. That's a nice way of saying that. You will get to this point, though, where you go, all right, okay. I understand I'm going to get everything I, I feel like I 
am deserving of having or that I want. I understand that. That's true. I've built enough faith and conviction where this is actually kind of what I understand is going on. Even if I forget that sometimes, I know that. That's when you really have built a stable foundation on which to kind of really access these meta states. This is what I think a lot of these um, mystical traditions and meditators are trying to get people to do. And it does work, but it kind of seems like you're hiding a little bit of the picture sometimes. This is just hiding it from ourselves. This is my own interpretation. Um, that's when you want to start going for peace, love, abundance, joy. Start with yourself. It is not selfish. You will know if you become aware of something that feels like an energetic imbalance truly, A, you will be able to acknowledge that, look at it, feel if you're really coming from an authentic, vulnerable, loving, unconditionally loving place. If that's true, it, it will resolve itself. That really is your only job is to make sure you're baselining back to a very loving unconditionally loving, abundant, peaceful, harmonious place. If that's not something you want, you don't have to do that. I want to be clear. There's no rule that says you have to gravitate towards abundance, peace, love, and harmony. It just seems in my world, in my timeline, most people want that on some deep, dumb, dumb, deep down fundamental level. That's what people want. Perhaps there are people who truly desire chaos, disorder, um, destruction. I wouldn't throw in there. Destruction is beautiful. I, I put that as part of harmony. But just like dissonance or like really uncomfortable experiences. And rest assured, they are in resonance with those energies and they get those. That does not have to be your game. If you've noticed that you've been placed or you've placed yourself in situations where disharmony, um, lack, uh, discord, um, mm, just uncomfortable states of being, if that's where you've been before, or maybe you find yourself in those situations now, you hold on, grab it, be like, oh shit, I think I'm there. I think I'm in one of those realms. I, I, don't, I don't think I want to live here anymore. That's, that's what you do. And then you start saying loving, lovingly to yourself, my infinite wisdom my eternal timeless being is aware that this is a situation I am creating. I no longer desire this situation. I'd like to move to a situation and live in a situation. In fact, I am living in this situation internally of peace, joy, abundance, harmony. That's it. Just catch yourself each time. At first, it may feel like, you know what, this is actually kind of like lying myself. Uh, it doesn't feel real. You will chip away. A great time to do it is when you're going to sleep at night, um, just relaxing yourself, where you're still gently aware of your surroundings outside of you, but you're really the focus is on the internal, imaginal state of what you're doing. That's all it takes. No one can tell me they don't have the time to do that. Time isn't really real. We'll cover, we've covered that plenty of times. Um, you know, meditation, I've told myself so many times I don't have time to meditate. Right? I don't have time to sit down and be quiet. That also isn't true. But what I'm really saying is, is I don't find this particular modality of sitting down and being quiet to be the thing that's best for me right now. I can ask myself that honest question. Is it what's best for me? Am I resisting it too much? Should I try it and see if it works? I've done those games and I will continue to play those games with myself to make sure that I'm honoring whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing. There could be a point in my life where I go and meditate silently for weeks who knows? I'm sure you'll hear about it on the podcast. You think I could shut up for three weeks? That seems pretty much impossible. <laughs> like, that's hard for me to imagine. Three weeks of me not talking. Jesus Christ. I can't imagine that. All right. See, there are limits, I guess, there are <laughs> to everyone's imagination. But my point is, is that getting into these states loosens, relaxes your mind. It relaxes what you're doing. And from there, you can implant the seeds that you want to plant. I know that it can be difficult to get into those states of consciousness. I know that um, even listening to one of these episodes can have like, while you're listening to it, it's great. Oh, yeah, I get it. Amazing. Got it. Many of you that carries over into this own internal realization 
of, oh my God, this is me. I'm doing it. And you play the game of stabilizing and equalizing and creating the things you truly desire, your heart's desire. That's amazing. I know there are other people who are like, yeah, I do it. And then like, you know, it fades. And that's only because you think it's something outside of you. That's the only reason anything fades um, because you're doing this externalizing game. This is like what you love increases and multiplies. What you criticize, what you doubt, what you fear fades away. That's okay, right? Every state, regardless of what it is, it's just waiting for you to live in it, no matter what. It doesn't matter if you call that good or bad or anything in between. It's there. It's infinite. You move your consciousness to that state. You experience it. This is why what we call miracles are usually just drastic kind of like hooks and detours into like jumping timelines, if you want to call it like that. You do too many of them, you can freak people out. I God knows how many people I freaked out and my life and again it's a reflection of my own kind of like whoa but i had the internal conviction when i was making a lot of different kind of moves that this is right i know this uh bear with me hang in with hang in there uh this plane is not crashing it's just doing some aerial tricks we're good right the great tragedy of this world is when you build yourself these fantasies these beautiful amazing realities but you don't live in them you're like i will um, it's like building a house buying a private island let's just say you were gifted a private island you can build your dream house and you're building it for a, a year two years three years four years five years ten years twenty years thirty years forty years fifty years then you're like all right i will live in this house next year and then you die that's basically what a lot of us do with our biggest dreams and fantasies because we're building, we're building, but we're putting them at a distance from ourselves. Live in the place after you already have the thing because that is moving your consciousness, your awareness to the places where you already have it. This goes for everything. It can be material things. It's very satisfying. We wouldn't have incarnated as physical beings if we didn't want to experience physical pleasure and pain. And whichever one you want to experience, you can move on that spectrum whenever you want. So I don't want to shit on material things, but you will find, why don't you just go for like um, ultimate freedom, peace, joy, abundance. I'm going to keep saying the same things. Go for those and see what happens to your mind. Do you think they'll be constrictive? Do you think they'll be bad? Doubtful. Okay. Just going through my Twitter at this point. Did I write anything interesting? Fucking listen to Frank Ocean. Jesus Christ. Just step your life up. Listen to Frank Ocean. Jeez, so good. Wow. The Dolphins were amazing. Um, watch these Vicepa commercials that I started watching. I don't know why. I'm just reading my tweets. They're weird. Um, also, the Red Cross theme song. Has anyone heard this? Is it real? Is this a real thing? I think it's real. They really, I saw it on a commercial. One of the beautiful things about watching football games is you get to watch these commercials that you never see by you I mean me and they're insane they've gone full fucking Tim and Eric like this whatever dimension we're in these commercials have no awareness they're so ridiculous but go listen to the Red Cross theme song it's insane also I believe the Red Cross does not do a great job job of distributing money so whatever they're cool love them too but don't donate to charities donate to your own charity which is your own unconditional love which is yourself first then do whatever you want. If you want to be, if you want to be philanthropic, you know what the most philanthropic thing you can do is take care of yourself, love of, love yourself. Then I guarantee you will be the most philanthropic person around. You will be spreading joy and love and happiness and cool things and holding great visions for yourself and other people. That's what you do. Donating twenty bucks to the Red Cross for them to write this theme song. Go go Google it. It's insane. It's truly one of the weirdest songs. It's kind of like the worst song ever written, but also maybe the best. Red Cross, you've done it again. Um, it's always you, right? Do you understand that? It's always you. I'm going to keep saying that forever because until I get evidence that it is not true, I have to keep saying it. It's very cool that we dream music into existence. Pretty sure that's a big part of why I'm here. The pleasure and just soul satisfying resonance. That's what pulled me out of that DMT trip. Music. Oh, God, I love it. It's cool we dream that into existence. What a cool one. We did it.
were badass. Uh, amazing lady I saw, uh, Jacksonville Jaguars fan. Uh, it was on my Instagram. She's incredible. She had one of the best quotes I've ever heard. She's this totally insane Jaguars fan. She goes, oh, we've been strong. We're just playing by the rules. I love that quote forever. It's an amazing quote. Oh, we've been strong. We're just playing by the rules. I totally get it. That's how. That's what being human feels like most of the time. It's like, hey, you are infinitely capable of doing literally whatever you want, but we'll play by the rules. We'll play by the rules for the most part. Sometimes we bend reality. Sometimes we want to just, you know, whatever. Got to beat the Raiders on a last second field goal. Got to just fucking have the best year of your life in 2020. And I know not everyone is having the best year in 2020. I mean, 2020 so bad. I get it. It sucks for some people. That's your perception of it. It doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean it's some karma that has destined you and fated you to some fucking bullshit existence. It's not what that means at all. It's cool. Flip your shit around. This is a nexus of opportunity. If you're listening to this podcast, chances are no matter what has happened this year, it has been a year of growth, of change, as are all other years. It's just we're ramping this baby up. We're turning this shit up to 11. That's all. 2020, what a fucking year. How do you feel about this COVID stuff, by the way? How many people? How many people hit me up for readings about COVID stuff? And the cards were like, I think you're good. I think you're good. I don't think you have it. And then you didn't have it. All of you? How many people were personally affected by COVID? Does this mean it doesn't exist for other people? No, that's just their reality tunnel. I see it on Twitter all the time. The angry people, the bitter people. I don't even think they know if they're angry or bitter, but they are so fucking focused on how other people are fucking up COVID. That is the recipe for getting COVID. I say this with enough hubris. Last week, two weeks ago, my son was at school. And uh, a girl, a classmate in his class tested positive, right? That created a wave of people having to get tested, making sure we're okay, vulnerable people who I, you know, hang out, all this stuff. And I had to fucking put my shit to the test. I had to say, you know what? How does reality work? Is this virus going to control me? Am I going to freak out and move into the reality where everyone's getting sick and fucking coughing and blah, blah, blah? Their virus is legitimately there. You know what I did? I fucking zoomed the fuck out and I said, you know what? Whatever people need me to do to handle this situation in physical 3D reality, I will handle it perfectly. We'll schedule tests. We'll get things done. Rapid tests. This is before Christmas, before the holidays. It's fucking nuts. Improbably got rapid tests scheduled, right? No, everyone's negative, of course, by the way. Didn't stop there. Watched a crazy series of, uh, of emails go back and forth between parents. It's like a Portlandia sketch. I won't go into details. It's just like a Portlandia thing. Insane just insane. And I took it a step farther. So, you know, no one's going to have people, everyone in this situation is going to look back. Everyone's going to be negative against all odds. People are going to look back and view this as a minor inconvenience. That's all. We sit here today, 10 days, 14 days removed from this situation. Everyone's fine. Are you waiting to come back and you're, oh, I was wrong. I was wrong. Now people are bad. No, everyone is fine. I know this sounds wrong to people. I know it sounds like, wow, what a fucking prick. This guy thinks he's better than the, can control a virus with his mind. Your life is the virus, is you. It's the relationship between what you resonate with and what you don't resonate with. I, it's very possible I've had the virus multiple times. I internationally traveled to Turkey in the middle of a pandemic. Who knows? Maybe I have it. Maybe I didn't. Who the fuck knows? Doesn't matter at the end of the day. You take in the information. You process it. You allow it to do what it's supposed to do. Is it supposed to kill you? Is it supposed to destroy your life? Is it supposed to show you things? You know what the virus has shown me? It's again revealed the innate limitless nature of my awareness and consciousness. I allow the expression and reality of this virus in the world because that seems to be something that collectively that we humankind want to experience i don't say get out of here buddy for everyone you're bad you're bad virus go away we don't like you no i don't say that's fucking insane it's the wrong approach that's delusion being delusional it's fighting reality it won't work out you're not gonna like it don't do that i allow that it exists i just say you know what that's that's i get what it is i'm not i'm not that doesn't yeah we're good on these parts i will cast whatever imaginal spells i need to cast to make sure that everyone 
who is able to hear the message that you, your own healing and hurting factor inside of you, that is what is creating your reality. That's what I'm here to tell you. That's your experience of the virus. That's what it'll be. Your guys are good and you know you're good. Please hit me up if you have been personally devastated by this virus. You're probably not listening to this podcast. And some people are. I know people put themselves through crazy physical, emotional situations so they can learn something from it. Great. Amazing. I love that. That's cool. I'm going to love a life of perfect health and harmony. And if I change my mind, I'll let you know. Okay. Imagination is not a state. It is the human existence itself. Please try to understand this. What you perceive yourself to be as human is just your imagination working, your consciousness. It's not some separate thing that you do sometimes. What I talk about is just kind of like taking that joystick, taking the controller, and being like, oh, okay, I can control this too. Great. doesn't have to be fucking wild animals fucking moving this thing around and biting it. Cool. Great. I can control this. Awesome. In a cool way, in a fun way. In a sweet way, in a loving way, sure, great, awesome. Gonna do that. Relax your mind. Life is good. It really is. Just try to remember that, okay? We fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Sorry, that's a Bible quote. I started reading the Bible. Uh, I started with Joshua, the New Testament here some good quotes in there i gotta say i have no um illusions about this being an indoctrination mechanism designed to control my mind and make me think a certain way no i don't have that i love it it's pretty cool that's a quote from it we fix our eyes not on what is seen but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary but what is unseen is eternal do you know how to see the unseen what sees with your body your eyes Can you see something without your eyes? Close your eyes. Can you see anything? That's real. That's eternal. That's fucking eternal. Whatever you see out in front of your face, temporary. Totally temporary. Transient. Not in a bad way. Shouldn't be scary. It's not like it's being ripped away from you. Totally fine. Temporary. Internally, what you see, eternal. Cool. Uh, Should we talk about, now? we'll save that one. We'll save that. We're going to do a crypto talk. Will I get this out today? Crypto talk 1 p.m. today, the day this is released. That is Tuesday, December 29th. 1 p.m. You need to be a patron. You need to it, for you can sign up for the lowest tier and then fucking quit it the next day if you want. Seven dollars. We're going to be doing a crypto 101. I'm going to try to do one of these a month just because I know a lot of people join the Discord and. Uh, you know, they're like, what the fuck is going on? I don't know. How do I <laughs> figure this out? We, I will be in there. We'll do a voice chat. It's going to be fun. I say this because I saw my tweet. Enter all crypto markets today. Just fucking Jesus. Ethereum, Bitcoin. What? How many times do you want me to tell you? You're welcome to the people who've been getting in touch saying, hey, I listened to you. I did this. I'm not tooting my horn. I just want you to see how fucking money really works. It's your imagination. It's your feeling of having it. Use a mechanism that's tried and true. Jump off the ship of the traditional finance uh, kind of system and move on to the new one which is you got enough we're good rest assured when the money i know i have materializes in my bank account it's already there when i choose to access it whenever that is you think anyone's gonna have a problem around me please it's already happened all just also when someone does really well when someone's winning When someone's like really just fucking killing it, be happy for them. It's your doing too. You are sharing in it. What a beautiful thing. If you criticize, if you condemn, "Mm, I can't, I can't that much. What do you think you're doing? Just be happy for other people. It's pretty great. Just try it. Even if you don't like them, just be happy for their success. It's cool that people can be successful. A change in consciousness always precedes a perceived change in external reality. Always. Signs always follow. Always. Doesn't happen the other way. You don't see something. So that's cool. Like, you understand that if anything that I'm saying resonates with you on a deep level in terms of you taking control and just running your own shit in the way you want. If you want to run off narratives that other people give you, they're very convincing. 
You can find the most well-researched book, documentary, therapist, and they'll tell you exactly what the fuck is going on with you. Oh, you're this, that, you're that type of person. You're this type of person. This is the problems that you have because this is the trauma that's been inflicted on you. This is, this is so clear. And you're like, oh yeah, yeah, totally. In the same way, we could be like, oh yeah, that's because you're a Scorpio. That's because you, uh, you're, you're an Aries rising there. That's for sure. And it's all fucking valid. That's the whole point. If any of that stuff resonates with you, take it, but don't forget you're not bound to that state. You're not bound to that narrative. Move in and out of the narratives and the states that are useful for you. What you love, you increase. Do you understand that? So love, love. It's a meta hack. It's a meta hack. Love, love. Love it so much. It's so great. It's my favorite thing. Truthfully, is. I love it. I feel comfy in love. I enjoy it. It's all around me. I express it. That is basically the mentality to be in when it suits you. Even being out of resonance with that can be beautiful. Seek beauty in your life. That's why you're here. It's such a beautiful planet. It's such a beautiful world. You know that, right? Like, you understand that. You get it. Like, this is a beautiful place. No matter what's going on, there's some beauty in it. But objectively, like, just go out, look around, travel 200 miles around you, wherever. It's beautiful. It's insane. If you forget that, that's cool, I guess. But, like, just... You wouldn't come to a place with this much beauty if it was to just <laughs> you to not appreciate it. Big time hack. Just be grateful and appreciate anything that comes to your mind that you desire to express. Use that, you know, infinite, eternal, unseen world. Be happy. Be grateful for it. You have it. What do you want? When I get to a base level state with other people, where everyone's just kind of like feeling good, we're happy, we get it. What do you want in that state? Be honest with yourself. What do you really want? Focus on that. Think about that. What would it feel like if you already had it? I talk about this stuff incessantly on this podcast primarily because a lot of you, probably all of you, are at the point where you've passed the thresholds of major doubt and fear and insecurity. That doesn't mean you don't come in contact with them. It's like being out in the world. Like you're walking out. You're walking out there. You're going to meet a lot of different people. It doesn't mean you won't encounter them. It's just you don't want to go hang out and move in and live with them, right? You're walking down the street. There's like a psychotic person telling you how everything is meaningless and the world is horrible and we're all just these fucking crumbs of dust and what a pe- terrible – how awful other people are don't marry that person say i love you and bring them into your home and live with them for the next 50 years unless you want to unless that's your vibe that's basically what you're doing every state of consciousness you are marrying yourself to or divorcing yourself from i'm very familiar with with both of these concepts in this reality and it's not a judgment thing you don't say, oh, well, no, this person fucking so miserable, so awful. Me, 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 live with. No, you did it. You chose to do it. You said, I fucking love this thing. Divorce it if you don't want to. It's not a big deal. It's totally fine. It's a state of consciousness. It's not a person. It's not an experience. It's a realm that you choose to live in. Your emotions are the cords and tethers and kind of track that move you along to them. This is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? This is it. This is the core message of what's going on. 2020 has been insane. Let's do a little 2020 recap towards the end of this episode. I understand it's been fucking nuts for so many people. Reality isn't what it appeared to be. Huh. Hmm. What a fucking mind fuck. If you're loving that, if you're playing in the uncertainty and the opportunity and the just freedom that that provides, congratulations. That's fucking amazing. Use that to better your life and by proxy, everyone else's life around you. We will collectively shape this world into a more harmonious place. It's happening. It's inevitable. It's why I say we're on the best timeline. Why do you think I say that? I don't, because we are. I'll let you know when I say this isn't the best. I'll say I'll, this is not the best timeline. We've moved off. And that would just be me ultimately 
being like, mm, I don't like him. <laughs> That's all. That's just whining and complaining. It's being a baby. We're on the best timeline. You're on the best timeline. Everyone is on the best timeline, not because we're immature, not because we're delusional, but because it just happens to be true. When one of us realizes that, we tell other people, we remind each other, oh, yeah, no, this is the best one. This is the best one. This is actually it. At any point in time, you can realize that. As you realize that and accept it, you will unlock what feel like powers, skills, magic, intuition, whatever it is, and it will be fun. Does it mean it will always be comfortable? That's up to you. Probably not. We didn't come here just for comfort. We came here also to experience dif discomfort so we can experience how good comfort feels, right? That, oh, that relaxing, amazing. You wouldn't know what that felt like if you always felt like that. It would just be like, oh, yeah, that's that thing. That's that thing we always are. No big deal. And that's kind of how we feel about being human and having a localized center of consciousness being in between our ears. We go, you know, this is just, this is just how we are. This is how maybe this is how everything is. Mm. Maybe brains are everything. Mm. We totally forgot. It's fine. Move yourself out of your body a few times. Do some ketamine, whatever, whatever it is to get you out of your body and be like, oh, awareness isn't just pinned down to this fucking avatar I have. That's cool. What am I going to do with that information? What are the implications of that? Mm -hmm. Mescal. This is not I'm just fucking this whole episode is just me just rambling, just free, free stream of consciousness type stuff. Mescal is amazing. I forgot about it. Um that's it. La Luna, my sister. I know a lot of you are waiting for this Mescal episode. I think we put one on the Patreon a while ago. That's there. We'll do another one soon. She's hardcore quarantining. That's cool. That's a choice. Um, but La Luna was good. There were some other ones. Just get some high quality Mescal in your life. Um, you can find her on Instagram, Tess Rose. What is it? Shit. I don't. Tess Rose is her name uh go ask her she's got the good shit i really like it it's a very pleasant feminine earthy grounding type thing it's cool for for my friends who don't like alcohol or don't enjoy it as much as other people that's kind of me it's good shit uh big shout out i don't have to mention them but i will to my friends at ned they are awesome. Go to helloned.com. Use the code SYNC, S-Y-N-C, at checkout. Um, get 15% off whatever you order. Full-spectrum hemp oil, CBD, chapstick. They just have so much shit there now. It's fucking cool. They send me it all. It's all good. I love it. Um, go check them out. Great guys. Uh, that's it. Crypto chat. I'm going to get this out in the next hour. That will give you two hours to join and fi find and join the Discord from the Patreon patreon.com slash synchronicity um we're doing shit in there i it's almost hard to not recoup your initial investment for joining the patreon if you get in the discord we're going to do the crypto 101 chat today it's pretty fucking simple stuff but we'll go into a little more advanced stuff some uniswap how to get some of these airdrops that have been great it's been pretty fun they just drop like 1500 into well, that's cool whatever for no reason that's how reality works now i'll take it um that's it i think that's it so much music coming guys so much music coming you're hearing a little bit of it here vocals not added to this been singing like singing learning how to mix vocals fun times uh, a lot of that stuff coming also on the patreon uh just expect a lot more music in 2021 2020 was calibration it was change it was transformation it was growth 2021 will be a lot of the same, but for those of us who have locked in to what our mission is, we will just, you're just going to do more of that and it's going to be fun and satisfying. And if you want to change your mind, you're allowed to do that too. But you probably know what you're supposed to be doing at this point. Uh, yeah. I think we have two Christ consciousness things opening up for the new year. Uh, that's it. Then that window closes for another year. You can check it out. Those are recorded. Uh, big shout out to all you guys. You're doing fucking great. Very proud of you. You really are amazing. Until next week, happy imagining.